and welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we're joined by our senior fellow, Dr. Stephen McCabe. So Stephen, last week has obviously been all about the GCSE and A-level results chaos. Labour have claimed that the algorithm used to downgrade thousands of A-level results in England was unlawful and the party wants Gavin Williamson to publish the legal advice he was given. Gavin is also facing calls from students and MPs to resign after he urged universities to show flexibility after Monday's results U-turn through September's admission process into further confusion. So do you expect Gavin Williamson to resign? Uh, the simple answer is no, um, because the, the, the difficulty with that would be that um, it, it would then call into question all the other sort of faux pas. Um, Boris Johnson is a peculiar politician um, insofar as, of course, he assembled around him people who were um, arguably much less intelligent um, and more prone to sort of to uh, committing the sort of uh, faux pas we're sort of seeing. So that, therefore, no, I, I don't see it immediately. He may go in a sort of reshuffle, but but I mean, any reshuffle in um, a number of weeks time, or, or uh, they, they're talking about this at the end of September, um, how many other sort of uh, uh, chaotic sort of days are we going to have to go through? Uh, uh, just to come back, I mean, the sort of the, the thing about the, um, or the argument that the, algorithm is unlawful I, I i don't like i don't really want to comment on that because I, I don't know but the, the, what's kind of amusing i heard a sort of leading statistician talking about this this morning that you can never have an algorithm that does the same job as marking individual piece of work um and, and all that they want to try and do is to smooth out the sort of the um the curve so it looked like it would do in, in uh, normal years um, and of course, the, the, the results go up or down. So it, it was kind of, it, you can almost see where they were going, but the, the point is it was just badly done and they didn't take the sort of the best advice that they could do. And more uh, reprehensibly, they were warned that there was going to be this chaos, why they didn't sort of pull the whole sort of thing um, a couple of weeks ago and avoid the sort of the chaos of last week. I don't know. I mean, it's, um, and we see this today with the sort of the, the BTEC results not being published for another week. Um, you, you do wonder, when when will we ever get back to normality? But we've been saying that for a long time. So the A-level U-turn was yet another U-turn from the government, making it the ninth decision change this year alone. So why are we facing so many U-turns? And do you think these U-turns are actually showing a bit of a lack of direction from the government? Well, I mean, my view quite personally is that so this is a government that is led by a man who is noted for his lack of attention to sort of detail, whatever his brilliance may have been academically. Um, and he, you know, he got a scholarship at Eton and um, also to go to, to Oxford. Um, he, he He's not a deep thinker. I mean, and of course, the whole point about uh, Cummins, he, he's the sort of the, the real brains of the outfit. But most particularly, um, let, let's face it, that was Theresa May. Um, whatever criticism may be made of her, she was dedicated. She wanted the sort of the, the best of the country, I believe, and she tried to sort of to seek a compromise in Brexit. But of course, that wasn't good enough for the sort of the um, the ERG and, and the other sort of um, more sort of forthright um, believers in Brexit. Therefore, she went. We got Boris in her um, her place. He um, had an election because, of course, he couldn't get his own way. And let's face it, of course, he, he um, uh, illegally prorogued Parliament and all of that. Um, and then had an election on the basis of getting Brexit done. And this this government, it, it gives the impression that they treat every day, or that they have up until now, as being sort of um, dealing with good news. It's it, They're in constant election mode. Uh, what are we going to give away today? Well, th 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 there will come a point when they have to stop giving. But the problem they're into now is the sort of the, I would call it the, the vortex of decline. They're getting sucked down by the events and that they're not even able to think about tomorrow because they have to sort of respond to today's crisis. It's, um, to quotes of Malcolm Tuffer, it's an effing army shambles. Um, and I can't see how it's going to get much better in the sort of the near future. Because, of course, we have a, hard, well, we have a Brexit you know, at the end of transition. That's only just over four months away and there's no deal yet. Uh, I suspect you're going to ask me a question about that. <laughs> Yeah, so in Brexit news, uh, the UK still believes that it can agree a post-Brexit trade deal with the EU next month. That's according to Downing Street. The two sides, though, are still divided over competition rules, fishing rights and how a deal would actually be enforced. The UK has ruled out extending the December deadline uh, to reach an agreement, though. But do you think we could end up seeing an extension after all? 
think the simple answer must be no, because, well, Boris Johnson, for as long as he remains prime minister, and you know, given the current climate, you know, that nothing's guaranteed, um, he has said he will not do that, you know, the dying in a ditch and all that sort of stuff. Um, it would take a sort of um, a, a, you know, a parliamentary agreement to do this. I, I think it would. I think it's, it's almost impossible. But the difficulty is, it depends what the sort of the crisis is. Also, COVID will be used as sort of the cover for sort of other crises uh, or, or things that may occur. I mean, what we could be facing is food shortages. I've certainly seen sort of um, um, news that some drug companies have been told to stop palm. Um, you know, the, the, the difficulty is that, I mean, that we, we're in now is the sort of the EU as a trading bloc. I think that they're, they're, they're sick and tired of trying to deal with this problem. So, yeah, um, and, and in many ways, you know, you look at the sort of the way their economies are going, they're recovering far more quickly. Uh, the UK, uh, or what, what currently constitutes the UK, and who knows where that will go, um, is in a sort of much weakened position. And you know, it would be, um, I'm very surprised if the sort of you um, didn't use their sort of strength or their apparent strength at the moment to sort of hammer home this, this thing. But, but nonetheless, the sort of the, the um, hardline Brexiteers are sort of saying that a no deal is a good thing. Well, uh, we may soon find out. But the trouble is that, that sort of uh, when we find out, it'll be too late to sort of to uh, reverse the sort of the pain that we may all collectively suffer. You know, it, it's very worrying given everything else that's going on as a result of COVID. Thanks for joining us, Steve.